We all love Cuphead, right? The awesome looking old art style mixed with the playstyle of the game, a shoot 'em up, an amazing game in every aspect really, except that doctor. Why the hell did you need to add him? I mean, he's the fucking worst. Uh, anyways, what's Cuphead been up to these days? I mean, I know the new show came out, so surely that was really good. One star. Jesus fucking Christ, he ever cooked. This shit doesn't even fit my full screen. Look, look at this review. Oh no, Satan was in the show. Yeah, no fucking shit, Karen. What did, what did you expect? Enough making fun of people's reviews, and now time for me to make my review and probably have people make fun of it. You too, baby. What can I say? It's just, it's just how it works here. Now, before the show even came out, many fans were hyped, even including me. I had my loot ready to go for this shit. But in all seriousness, I was hyped. I mean, I remember calling my friend, telling him about it even. We were both shitting over the new Cuphead show coming soon, and we were so excited. I remember reading Twitter. I know, I know. Sh shame on me. But I was scrolling and my eyes widened when I saw the King Dice clip. I think that's the day I lost my virginity. I was sitting in awe like, wow, this is really happening. An amazing moment for most, I think. Not only me, of course, but many others as well. Now, of course, everyone loved the storyline of the game and the game itself. And if you didn't, you get murdered in cold fucking blood. The fan base was incredible, and it was ready to finally watch the Cuphead show. S -s Some of the fan base was, was doing other stuff. Those those things we don't mess with. In all honesty, I'm still excited for future seasons. Wait, there's three seasons? And a fourth one soon? Oh my god, I gotta get- I've only seen season one- are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I was debating watching every season, but as you can see, I'm now in a committed relationship with Cuphead. But it's fine, it's fine, I think I'm mentally ready. Now I admit, I'm not the funnest to watch shows with, but you know, I, I try my hardest. Mugman, I think you're gay. Cuphead and Mugman, the duo are back. Season 1 is honestly not bad at all, I kind of enjoyed watching it. Is that is that so bad? I mean, a lot of people said that I wasn't like the game enough, but do you really want a 1 to 1 replica of the game as a show? Oh. Oh, you- oh, okay. But I think the show still gives enough credit to the game. The game being a shoot 'em up and the show just kind of being anything. Mugman broke his handle, so everything goes to shit from here. Now, there's some things I admit, like the devil could have been in the show maybe a teensy bit more. He was there more towards the end of season one, but the first half, he wasn't in it as much. Going in, I kind of thought since he's the big bad guy, he'll have a good chunk of screen time, right? But he could have been incorporated a little more. In my opinion, though, don't suck me. In the first season, we got introduced to Chalice, and overall, Chalice is a pretty cool character. She bad. She bad. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I feel like Chalice, Cuphead, and Mugman are a pretty good trio, though. It's good to see them together. Only thing is that she comes in, like, at the last episode of the season, but, like, I kinda understand. I would also like to read one more review. You got mad at your son because he had a Cuphead profile picture on Netflix. That is, that is just fucking livid. Ah, uh, time to watch Netflix from a day back at work. Little Timmy, what the fuck is that? What? I'm done with your shit. I'm done with your shit. Get the fuck over here, Timmy. The devil shows up because guess what? He's the main villain. I would let my nephew watch this. It's a good show for the younger generation. And on the topic of the younger generation, I feel as if the show dedicates itself more to the younger audience, not the day one Cuphead fans. I mean, older Cuphead fans can watch it, of course. I mean, look at me. But the younger audience is more apparent, I think. Overall, the first episode isn't a bad introduction of what you're getting yourself into. It has the main two, Cuphead and Mugfuck, and the animation is pretty good too. No wonder it did pretty good and made the rich white old men at Netflix happy. Well, you know that shit did good if there's already almost a fourth season, and it's only been a year since the show's release. The show gives more backstory into the characters rather than the games as well. It gives them more character, you know? And my man Bull Boy needs some fucking respect. Mugman did his ass dirty. Nobody asked you, Bull Boy! And, oh my god, is that, is that the devil? Okay, Karen, you might, ju you might just have me here. When you hear the Cuphead show, you might think, oh, cringe kids show. After a while, even though I was excited, I thought the same exact thing. But season one does a pretty good job at capturing the Cuphead vibe. Ooh, look, pop it on screen, pop it on screen. Oh, do I have your attention? Okay. Cool. Now, let's go over the best episode. My favorite episode of season 1 was by far Ghost Dang Real. Not only do I feel as if it's the best driven episode, but it's also like the best animated. Like, look at this shit. It looks awesome. I have to admit, this looks better than my imaginary girlfriend. What? She's real, I swear. Mugman's characters really captured her too. Trusting his brother, being by his brother's side so the ghost don't buttfuck the- Wait, that was- who wrote this script? Same with Cuphead, his characters captured it too. Mainly, they walk into this graveyard trying to be brave and then, uh oh, the gate locks behind them. After trying to make camp, the ghosts catch up to them and then almost kill them right there. So, yeah. But luckily, Cup fucking Mugman run away and make it back home to Elder Kettle. Oh, and on the topic of Elder Kettle, episode 11 is so sad. Elder Kettle overhears Cuphead and Mugman talking about their pet worm and thinks they're talking about him. He then thinks they're gonna kill him, and it's so sad, bro. I don't know why. And at the end of the episode, it makes it even sadder. Out of my misery and bury me in the backyard. 
It's just sad. Like, fuck, Netflix making me cry and shit. <laughs> only two more seasons, only two more seasons, only two more seasons. Before I even start, I would like to say my man Bull Boomer to come back. What a lovely fella. Oh, shit. Generally, season one was better than season two. Some parts, you could definitely tell that they were running out of ideas. Like, huh, I wonder what happens in this one. It's just Mugman getting piano lessons, and Cuphead good at piano, that's it, oh, wow. And it is boring as hell to watch. But this season has some cool episodes, like the Candyland one, or the Calamaria one. Chalice is around more, which is good to see, since she's a pretty cool character nonetheless. Now, reverting back to the running out of ideas real quick, uh, they, they really did. The second half of season two just gets really boring, and honestly, gets repetitive after a while, not saying it's a bad show, just saying it's an okay show. That could also be because I binge watched it, you know, in one day, but who knows. Like, don't get me wrong, I like the show and I enjoy most of the episodes, but like, really? Piano lessons? Whenever the show started, to be fair, I was thinking that this was going to happen, but I, I kept my hopes too high. I think they should have included the devil more, or Chalice a little more too, because all the while Cuphead and Mugass are the two main characters, there's some variety in there every now and then. Chalice and the devil are in the show, but it's usually at the start or end of the season. The middle of the season is like a war zone of fucking boring ideas. My favorite episode has to be the one with Cal and Rhea, aka my wife. Not only is it filled with a pretty good amount of action, but overall it's funny as well. And you know, Cal and Rhea. Oh yeah, and Captain Briny Beard is in too. I'm trying to take my fucking wife, dude. Uncool. Uncool. Man. Cuphead and Mugman steal a boat, or quote unquote steal a boat. Briny Beard appears and they shit their pants. But Mugman comes with a solution. They help Briny Beard make Calamaria his girlfriend, and then he takes them home. Easy peasy. But little do they know that Calamaria is a bad bitch. God dang. Calamaria turns Briny Beard into stone, and eventually he turns back, and they live happily ever after. I think. I mean, they blow each other a kiss and. That's kind of it. Then he sells off, so I don't really know, but we'll see, I guess. Also, we'd like to give credit to the Candyland episode because, damn, it is animated nicely. Now, the worst episode. I'm sorry, I just can't stop bringing up this episode. It isn't good. It isn't bad. It is just utterly fucking boring. Like, I see what they're going for, but also... No? Out of all things, piano lessons. Why don't we make an episode about fucking paint drawing, then? You know, I don't mind this, actually. <laughs> Oh yeah, by the way, Mugman gets captured by the devil and almost dies. Sorry. So remember how season 2 is boring and the devil and Chalice were barely in it? Season 3 is the exact opposite. Chalice gets her own episode and is in many more, and the devil even gets his own episode and is in many more as well. Season 3 did better than season 1, in all honesty. It's everything you could really hope for in the Cuphead show. And how could you forget the Christmas special that every single Netflix show does? But in all seriousness, the Very Devil Christmas episode is a really good one, and Chalice's episode too. It's very well done and adds to the story. This season did everything that season 2 didn't. Every episode was a funny, inclusive story, and they all had some story aspect to it. And the finale is the best episode in the show, I think. The best story, with the best characters, with the best scenario. This makes watching the Cuphead show worth than honestly except that fucking piano lessons episode we learn that chalice got fucking annihilated by a car so the devil makes her a deal she does him a favor and she gets her life partially back and so she takes the deal later she finds out that the favor is getting cuphead and mugman's souls she eventually stops herself and tells cup ass and mug fuck <laughs> i can't she eventually stops herself and tells cup ass and mug fuck about the deal she made with the devil. Since the devil didn't get his way, Chalice now makes a new deal. They have a dance competition, and if the devil wins, then Chalice is gonna have to give up her soul. In my opinion, the devil won. God damn, his ass is beautiful. Chalice loses. Who would have thunk? Then Cuphead brings up a deal. The devil beats him in a game of rock, paper, scissors, then he can take all three of their souls. Generally, what the fuck was he thinking? I don't know, but we continue on. Cuphead beats the devil's ass and takes the win. So they live as the devil nosedives into shit. Pretty good episode, if you ask me. The opening of season 3 was amazing, and so is the ending, and even the in-between of it. They perfected season 3, and it's a good thing they did, because again, season 2 just sucked. I don't think there needs to be a season 4, really. I feel like season 3 is a good closer, and usually when shows get a season four the show starts to suck <clears throat> stranger things sorry someone had to say it overall the show wasn't bad it just got boring at some parts it added life to the characters a bit more in my opinion altogether the show did a great job of capturing the cuphead spirit in the old 1940s animations huge respects to the animators writers and everyone who worked on it i finished this review off with a quick tier list yep that uh seems like a pretty good tier list to me